Hey guys, we are in week three of our Thanksgiving episodes, and this week we are going vegetarian. That's right, it's a meatless Thanksgiving, and I promise there will be no tofu turkey. We're going to kick things off with an arugula salad with fresh grapes, goat cheese, and crunchy candied pecans. Then I'll show you how to make my to die for cranberry orange raisin bread. Once you try homemade bread, you'll be hooked forever. For our main course, it's a vegetable green curry served in roasted acorn squash alongside coconut rice. And for dessert, it's a pear walnut tart tartan with brandy scented whipped cream. If you like the looks of this menu, remember you can now subscribe to my own channel, Entertaining with Beth, where next week I'm gonna show you how to make my delicious pumpkin bread, the perfect hostess gift if you're headed to somebody else's house for Thanksgiving. Now I have to admit, I spent a lot of time thinking about this menu. Ever since my vegetarian dinner launched a few weeks ago, I have learned more about being a vegetarian from all of you, such as not all vegetarians eat eggs, good to know, marshmallow is not vegetarian, thanks to the gelatin, who knew, and not all vegetarians eat cheese because of the rennet that's used to make it. So, for this menu, I wanted to make sure that it would be something that could please everybody, even vegans. So as we go through, there may be dairy products here and there, but I'm gonna give you alternate versions so that if you are vegan, you can enjoy the dishes as well. I love to start a meal in the fall with a great salad. And for me, a great salad has four components. Something bitter, something sweet, something creamy, and something crunchy. And all of those flavor combinations are packed in this salad. You wanna start with your vinaigrette. Now usually with salad dressings, I go for either grapeseed oil or olive oil. I usually don't go for a lot of those fancy oils, but for this salad and because it's Thanksgiving, I thought why not try a walnut oil? And I'm so glad I did because it is so delicious. And I was able to find it just at my local grocery store, so it's not an exotic ingredient that you're gonna have a hard time finding. So give it a try and I think you'll see what I mean. You're gonna start with a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. To that, you're gonna add some balsamic vinegar and then slowly add your walnut oil, about a tablespoon at a time. Once it's all combined, all you do is just season with salt and pepper. Then to mix your salad, you're gonna use arugula. If you're not familiar with arugula, it is usually sold in your produce aisle next to all of the prepared lettuces, the kind that you get in the bag that are already washed. It's a little bit bitter, but that's why I like it. And it's really delicious when paired with something sweet, like a red grape. So you're just gonna slice those grapes in half just to make them easier to eat. Then you're gonna add some crunchy candy pecans. Candy pecans you can usually find in the produce aisle, usually on those lower shelves by the salad because they're a popular thing to toss into a salad. And then the final step is some goat cheese. Now, if you don't eat cheese and you wanna make it vegan, you just omit the cheese and it will still be equally good. I love this salad because I love the flavor combinations. You've got the bitterness of the arugula, the sweetness of the grapes, and the crunch of those candy pecans. And if you use the goat cheese, you'll also get that creamy texture as well. It is the perfect thing to kick off your vegetarian Thanksgiving. If you have always wanted to make homemade bread, but have been a little bit intimidated by the process, don't be, because this is the recipe for you. It takes no fancy kitchen gadgets. The only thing you need is a bowl and a wooden spoon. And if you have those two things, you can make this bread. The first step is you wanna prepare two bowls. One bowl is gonna be for your mixture, and the other bowl is where you're gonna put your dough. In the second bowl, you just wanna add two tablespoons of olive oil and make sure you grease the sides well. Then you're gonna mix your flour mixture. In a bowl, you're gonna add some flour, some yeast, some sugar, some salt, and the zest of one orange. Give that a good whisk and then set it aside. Then you wanna slice your orange in half and juice it into a small bowl. In the bowl, you're then gonna put your cranberries and your golden raisins. You wanna let that sit for about 20 minutes. What that's gonna do is flavor your cranberries and raisins with a delicious orange flavor, as well as plump them up a bit. Then you're gonna drain them completely and add the fruit to the flour. Then you're gonna add your warm water. You wanna make sure it's not too hot because if it's too hot, it will actually kill the yeast. And if it's not warm enough, it's not gonna actually activate the yeast. So it needs to be kind of the temperature of bath water. You wanna slowly mix the water just until a dough forms. Once that begins to happen, you wanna actually take your hands, put it in the bowl with the oil, get them all nice and coated, and then go in and grab that dough. You wanna transfer the dough onto a floured cutting board 
and then just begin to knead it. The idea is you wanna just work in that olive oil into the dough and knead it about 20 turns, just until the dough begins to form into a nice ball. Then you're gonna take the dough, put it in your oiled bowl, and then cover it with plastic wrap. Then you're gonna take this bowl and put it in a draft-free area of your kitchen. One of my favorite places to store my dough when it's rising is actually in the oven with the oven off. That way, it's completely draft free, it's out of the way, and isn't taking any counter space as well. After the dough has risen for an hour, it will double in size. At that point, you're gonna take it out of your bowl, knead it again for probably another 20 turns, put it back in the bowl, and let it rise for another 30 minutes. At this point, your dough is ready for the oven. Now, I like to cook my bread on a pizza stone just because it will give you a really nice crisp crust, but you don't need a pizza stone. You could put it on a cookie sheet and that would be perfectly fine as well. Cook your bread for at least 30 minutes, just until it's golden brown, and when you knock on it, it'll sort of have a hollow sound. That's when you know it's done. You're gonna pull it out and just let it cool completely. Then, when it comes time to serving it, I will then pop it back in the oven at about 350 degrees just to warm it up and keep that top nice and crisp. You will see, this bread is so delicious. When you cut into it, it's got that crispy crust and that soft, chewy inside, and then mixed with the cranberries and the raisins, it is the perfect bread for Thanksgiving. And when you bring homemade bread to your table on Thanksgiving, your guests will have a newfound respect. Now for the main course. Years ago, my favorite Thai restaurant in town used to serve these beautiful curries in acorn squash. I don't know if that was just something they did or if that's a traditional Thai thing to do. In fact, if there's anybody out there, if we have any Thai viewers, if you let me know, is that a traditional Thai thing, I would love to know. But when I was thinking of this menu, I couldn't think of anything that looked more festive and fall-like than to serve a curry in an acorn squash. The great thing about this dish is that the acorn squash not only serves as a bowl, but you can also eat it as you're eating the curry. So that every spoonful of curry, you scrape off a little bit of the squash and it is the most delicious flavor combination. It also looks so pretty and is so festive for Thanksgiving. So the first thing is, is you wanna prep your squash. You're gonna slice the tops off, but keep them because we're gonna use that as little tops when we serve it. Then you wanna flip them on the bottoms and just sliver off a little bit on the bottom. You wanna do that so that your squash will sit upright and not get all wobbly on you. Take all of your squash and put them in a large casserole and do the same thing with all the tops. Then you're gonna add a little bit of butter and a little bit of brown sugar. Now, if you don't eat dairy and you wanna make this vegan, just add about two teaspoons of oil in the bottom of your squash instead of the butter along with your sugar. You're gonna roast them at 400 degrees for about an hour. While that's roasting, you can get on with making the curry. In a large soup pot, you're gonna add some onions, some ginger, and some garlic. You're gonna cook that up just until those vegetables are fragrant and they begin to soften. Then you're gonna add your green curry paste. Now, how much really depends on how spicy you like your curry. I kind of like it on the spicy side. I think curry is great when it has a little bit of a kick. So I would go ahead and add four teaspoons. But if you don't like it spicy, I would just cut that in half. Just stir that up, cooking for about a minute, and then you're gonna add your vegetable broth and your coconut milk. I like to use the light coconut milk just because coconut milk has a lot of fat in it already. Season with salt and some brown sugar. Then you're gonna add your vegetables. The first one you wanna add are the sweet potatoes. They're gonna take a little bit longer to cook than the other vegetables, so you wanna give them a head start. Let them simmer about five to seven minutes, and right when they become tender, you're going to add your eggplant and your cauliflower. You're gonna cook that up just for a few more minutes, just until the other vegetables have also become tender, and then your curry is done. And the final step is just to ladle out some of this beautiful curry into these well-roasted acorn squash, garnish with a little bit of fresh basil, and then top with your squash top. When you bring these little squash to the table, your guests will be so charmed. They're festive, they're elegant, and they just look so beautiful. They're also really delicious too. It's the perfect main course for vegetarian Thanksgiving. Now the perfect complement to your Thai green curry is some coconut rice, and here's how you make it. Now the first step is to toast your coconut. For this recipe, I like to use two types of coconut, just some unsweetened coconut flakes and some raw coconut chips. One you're gonna put in the rice and the other you're gonna use to garnish the rice. Put them both on a cookie sheet, pop in the oven for about four to five minutes, just until they're both golden brown. Then take them out and set them aside. 
Then in a saucepan, you're gonna combine your coconut milk, some water, and some salt. Bring that up to a boil, and then add your rice. Then turn down the flame to a simmer, put your top on your pot, and let that cook just until the rice is completely done. Then, you're gonna fluff it all up with a fork, add the zest of one lime, your toasted coconut flakes, and then give that a good toss. Then I like to transfer it to a decorative bowl, and then top with the toasted coconut chips. I love this dish because it's beautiful, it's elegant, and it's also delicious. It's also a little bit fancier than the plain old white rice, something perfect for a special occasion like Thanksgiving. Now many of you may be familiar with an apple tart tartin, which is a very famous French dessert that's cooked in a skillet, upside down, baked, and then served right side up. Well, I thought it would be a lot more fun to try pears and walnuts with puff pastry. It's quicker and easier than the traditional tart tartin. Now, if you don't eat dairy, not to worry. I'm gonna show you a vegan alternative to this dessert in a minute. So the first step is to measure out your puff pastry. You wanna start with a 10 inch skillet. That way you'll be assured that this tart will feed eight people. Flip it upside down and just score all the way around the puff pastry so that you get a circle. Pop the puff pastry in the refrigerator just while you prep your pears so that way it will stay cold. Then you wanna prep your pears. You're gonna slice them vertically. I just think they're prettier that way and it'll cook quicker because they'll be so thin. And you can leave the skins on. I think it's prettier that way, it's a little bit more rustic, and who needs to spend time peeling pears if you don't have to? In a skillet, you're gonna melt some butter, then add some brown sugar and some white sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Give that a good whisk just until it's melted and bubbly, and then you're gonna add your walnuts just in a single layer. And on top, you're gonna add your sliced pears. And then fit the pastry just on top, fitting it nice and snug. And you can even take the pastry and just move it a little bit up the side of the pan. That way you'll be assured that you'll get a good seal. At this stage, if you are not gonna bake this tart right away, if you're making this the day before Thanksgiving, which I would recommend, you could then put it in your fridge and wait until it's time to bake. If you are making it right away, you wanna pop it in the oven and let it bake for about 20 to 25 minutes just until that puff pastry is golden brown and puffed up. Now comes the most important part, flipping your tart. You wanna put the skillet on your cooktop just to allow it to cool for about five minutes. Then you're gonna take a cutting board. It has to be bigger than the actual skillet. And then as you're holding the cutting board, hold the bottom of the skillet and flip. And you will see, if you've used a nonstick skillet, that tart will come right out. Then allow the tart to cool slightly for about seven minutes, just so that it's easy to handle, and then gingerly place it on your cake stand. Et voila, your tart is done. Then you're gonna serve it with some homemade whipped cream. You're just gonna take some heavy cream, some powdered sugar, and then I love to add a little bit of brandy. The combination of brandy and pear is such a wonderful flavor combination that it's really delicious. But if you don't drink, that's okay. You could just leave it out and add about a teaspoon of vanilla. It would still be good. So if you're vegan, here's what you're gonna do. In a small bowl, you're gonna combine the sugars and the spices, the walnuts, and then I like to add some raisins. Give that all a good stir, and then take your pears, cut them in half, and scoop out the core with a melon muller. Then take some of that walnut raisin mixture and fill the centers, and then bake at 450 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes just until they're tender. And you will see, you will have a delicious dessert that's just as elegant and beautiful as the pear tart tartan. So if you'd like to host this vegetarian Thanksgiving, here's your game plan. The day before Thanksgiving, you can make your curry. Allow it to cool and then store in an airtight container and refrigerate. You can also make the brandied whipped cream and pop in the fridge. The morning of, you wanna make the bread and allow it to cool. Then leave out uncovered at room temperature. You can prep your squash, keep them covered and refrigerate. Prep the pear tatin, but don't bake it. Just follow the steps through adding the puff pastry, then cover and refrigerate. If you're making the baked pears, you can prep those as well. Just squeeze a little lemon juice on them to prevent them from turning brown. You can make your vinaigrette, cover, and store at room temperature. Once your guests arrive, pop your squash in the oven since they take an hour to cook. 
Once the squash has about a half hour left, you can make your rice. Once the rice is done, turn off the flame and keep the lid on it. That way it'll be kept warm. Then set your curry to reheat on a low simmer. Once your curry has been reheated, you do want to taste it. Sometimes the spiciness can mellow, especially if you make it the day before. So if it needs to be kicked up a notch, just add another two teaspoons of the green curry paste. Then it's time to serve the salad. Once your salad course is done, toast your coconut for the rice and then begin to ladle the curry into your acorn squash. And lastly, before you sit down to eat, pop your pear tartin or your pears in the oven to bake. And then sit down and relax and enjoy a delicious vegetarian Thanksgiving. Well, there you have it, my vegetarian vegan Thanksgiving. I hope it's a menu that pleases everybody, but if it doesn't, let me know. I always learn so much from you guys. So, that concludes our Thanksgiving menus. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, whatever menu you end up doing. And if you're like me, you'll probably do a few dishes from all the menus. I will see you back here in two weeks. I'm gonna take a little bit of a holiday break and then we're gonna talk Christmas. I'm gonna show you a delicious menu for Christmas morning. I'll see you then.